Well, now that you have your Ubuntu server downloaded, installed, up to date, everything looks good, and you've installed MyraDB, we're now ready to do our fourth step. Configure MyraDB and adding users. Now this is a couple of steps. It's a little lengthy. You have to watch the command structure. And what I'll do is I'll put the actual uh, commands or the uh, SQL statements in the description below on this video. So if you need to highlight them, cut them, and copy them into your machine, you can do so. But it's going to make it a lot easier for you. So let's go ahead and start this step. So we're back here at our Ubuntu server. We're going to type in sudo myradb and enter. Put our password in. Enter. So now you see you're at a myradb prompt. Okay. So this is telling you that you're inside of the service or the MyRDB database server. You can do all of your commands right from here. If you got really good with SQL statements, you can create tables. You can um, create um, all the databases. You can build a new database, create the tables in it, build the columns. You can do all that very easily in a command line structure. I've also written some scripts in the past that I would set everything up in a script and run my script against this and it will do it all for me. That's one way. The other way is to use a graphical user interface. Okay, That's where the dbeaver comes in or database beaver and I'll show you that in, in a few steps here. Right now we have to concentrate on setting the database server up to allow us to connect to it and that's very critical. If this isn't set up right you will never connect to it with any uh, database type uh, program like MySQL Workbench or uh, dbeaver. Um, I also used another one on Mac a while ago, but it's Mac specific, so I'm not going to really discuss that one. But dbeaver is where you want to be, but we'll talk about that a little bit. So the first thing we have to do here is we have to grant some users. We have to create some users, okay? So to do this, it's very case specific, okay? So the first word is grant space so you're writing an SQL statement, grant all. So you're saying grant all privileges. All the privileges are going to be granted on, and we're going to do asterisk, period, asterisk. So grant all privileges on all databases. So whatever database you have in there, you're going to have privileges to, to access that database. Space, two, Okay, who are, you, who are you granting these privileges to? All right, now we're going to create an account here, and we're going to call it admin. So we need a single quote, and type admin, and another single quote. Okay, I'm sorry I'm using the word okay. I try not to do that as much as possible. So single quote, admin, single quote, at. Where is this user located at on the network? Where are we going to give them permissions from? So the first one is going to be single quote, localhost, and a single quote. So what that's telling the database server is grant all privileges to all databases to the new user admin on the local host, on the, the actual Ubuntu server, the local host. Next, space, identified. I D E N T I F I E D identified by single quote and now we want the password. What's the password going to be? And you're going to see this in here, so I'm just going to call it password. Another single quote. So my username is admin. My password right now is going to be password. Again, this is strictly for demonstration purposes. You would change that password, obviously, to whatever you want it to be. Something uh, I would use a, um, you know, a, a complex password. Put it in there. Space with space grant space option. So we're grant we're giving it the grant. We're we're fully permitting it and granting it. That's the option. Make sure you end it with a semicolon. So grant all on asterisk period asterisk to the new user of admin at localhost identified by password is the password with grant options. 
And if we hit enter, we'll see where it says query OK, zero rows affected. People say, well, wait, it didn't add it. It added it to the user's data table and it's showing that, that it didn't affect any rows. So that's fine. Don't worry. We're OK there. The next thing that's very important, and this is a step that so many people miss, is we have to add that user again. So if you use your up arrow key, it's going to make it a lot easier for you. Now you want to grant access from, so remember now, admin at localhost is the local host, and people get confused. Even though this is a virtual server running on my computer, the computer is actually uh, the hosting computer. So the computer has a separate IP address from the server. So if you try to access it with the program we're going to use, dBeaver, and you're trying to gain access into that server, even though it's on the same box, just in your head make believe, and I tell my students, make believe it's in a server rack at AWS or you know at Azure or at Google Cloud Services. So it's not in your in your rack. It's not in your computer. You're accessing it outside. Got it? Good. What we have to know now is we have to know, and I want to bring up here um, terminal. And what I have to do is find out what my local IP address is for my computer. So if you're doing this on a Windows computer, whatever, know what that IP address is. If you're using cloud services, you have to put in your outside IP address. To find out what your outside IP address is, I'm not going to do it here obviously for this video because all you find people may be trying to hack my system. All you have to do is go to a web page and type in what is my IP and it will give you your outside IP address. That's what you'd want to put in. If this is hosted on AWS, uh, Azure, Google Cloud Services, or any other hosting service out there, because you're coming to their service from your outside IP address, not from your inside. But here we're going to use the inside IP address. So if I do an IF config, I have to find out what is my network running on. So as you can see here, I have many, many, many network cards in here, right? Because I'm bridging and everything and I'm doing all this fantastic stuff inside my network. So EN0 would be my wired Ethernet. So I'm going to write that address down. That's my wired Ethernet. You may be on wireless, okay? 192.168.1.3. Good. That's all I need that for. I can just close this window. So I'm going to just close my terminal out. Back on my Ubuntu server, I'm going to backspace with the arrow. Don't backspace with your delete key if you're on a Mac because you're going to start deleting all this fine code you put in there to the single quote. And then now I'm going to use my delete key and backspace. Take that out. Put your IP address in there. 192.168.1.3. Back forward, back out to the end of this line. So now this is saying that me the, or the admin account can access this server from that IP address. So you see now where we're starting to get very granulated on who's allowed to access this. So if this admin happens to be on another computer somewhere in, within the network, anywhere in the network, it's not going to allow them in. You can get fancy. You can go in here and put a CIDR address in there, and that's just like a slash 24 or slash 16 to say, look, this whole entire network, wherever the admin is, they can access this database. But for now, just keep it very specific and hit enter. Again, you can see no rows affected. It was accepted. Remember when we installed MyRDB? We installed MyRDB and we set everything up and at the very end it says you want to reset the user base table and we said yes. Well, there's no prompt here, so we're going to have to do it on our own. Flush, all caps, space, and uh, the next word is privileges. P-R-I-V-I-L-E-G-E-S with a semicolon. So you're going to flush the privilege table and reload it. Good. Oh, now we get these users set up. Now we're able to access this using the word password and the user account admin. We can access this from this computer. Pretty cool stuff. The next thing we have to do is, what I like to always do, is restart the database server. And okay, now remember when you're restarting the service, 
that MyRDB is a derivative of MySQL. So all we have to do is type in sudo space system ctl space restart space mysql enter you'll get a command prompt back that's it mydb is restarted and ready to go so we have our user account created everything's ready to roll let me look and see uh, bring my notes back up make sure we're on the proper path here so configuring MyRDB and adding users. Oh, we have one more thing to do to configure. So the next thing we need to do to configure this is, I just want to make sure, I'm just going through my notes here to make sure that we are good. We have to make a small change. Right now, MyRDB is set up to only listen to uh, calls from the local host. And we want to set it up to be able to access the database server from anywhere in the network. Or in the world for that instance so we're gonna to have to drill down to a couple paths here and follow along I'll do this very slowly so you know where you're going the first thing you're gonna do is type in LS LS if you're not familiar at all with Linux just stands for list like DIR in Windows so now we're gonna type CD space and two dots what that'll do is it moves us through the directories so it's moving us down one directory Again, type ls. You can see that we're in the home directory. Okay. Oh, all right. cd space two dots enter. Now you're in the root directory. See the slash? Type in ls. Enter. Now we can see all the directories within our server. These are all the different directories that's running your Ubuntu server. Each one has very specific meanings and very specific needs. We're not going to go through that today. There's many a great videos on YouTube for you to find out. One guy has sat through, he tells you every single directory and what should and should not be in it. But what we're worried about today is we have to update a file to allow all these connections into our Myra SDB server. If you don't do this, you will not be allowed to make connections to this thing from outside of the local host, as I just showed you. So what I'm going to go into is I'm going to go cd space etc enter if you do an ls you're going to see that there's many directories in here everything that the computer has on it is running seems to be in the etc directory what we're concerned with is a folder in here and that folder as soon as i find it i'm sure i could just look at my notes and see what it was the folder you're actually looking for is my sql so you're going to do a CD again, CD space. You can see MySQL. So if it's in dark blue, that's a directory. If it's in white, that's a file. So we can't go into a file. I mean, you could, but that's not for this lesson. So CD, MySQL, enter. Do another LS. The next folder we're going into is the MyRDB con f d so if we do a cd space if you type in m a r and tab tab key is your friend in linux you see tab i hit tab it auto complete i didn't have to type the whole entire directory out if there's more than one directories with the same beginning letters it will give you a choice it will show you two or three of those hit enter now I'll do an ls again Everybody see the file called 50-server.cnf, 50-server. We're going to use a program that I like. There's many editing programs, and I know I always get comments, oh, I use Vi because it's the best, or I use Vim or Vim Vi, um, you know, all these different editors, people. And if you love it, great. I use Nano because I was kind of brought up with Nano when it was released, and, and I really enjoy using it. It's just easy for me to figure out. So I'm going to do a sudo. Just to make sure I have write privileges to this file, I'm going to do nano, and I'm going to do 50-s, and if I hit the tab key, you'll see it auto-completes, hit enter. Now you can see I'm in a configuration file for, uh, for MyRDB. What I want to go down to here is if you go down right here, 
there where it says bind address if you can see my little cursor flashing use your arrow keys and go to the right and then backspace because right now it says 127.0.0.1 all that is saying is that is the address for the local host we want to allow all connections from everywhere if you want to limit it to one computer in your network just put that one computer here and that's all we'll listen for we're going to do 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0. Just a placeholder, think of it as a wild card, and it allows all connections into this server, this database host. At that point, you're going to do a Control O. That's the right command. Hit Enter. Control X will get you out of there. Everybody knows I always like to clear my screen. And then just use your up arrow key again to where you find, should be able to find us, I think. sudo systemctl restart mysql enter anytime you make a change to a configuration file in linux pretty much any computer i, I can think of if it's a configuration file always restart that service because what that allows you to do is allows the service to read that config file again and make sure it knows what you want it to do so everything is set up on here now where we should be able to connect to it let's look at our notes make sure i have everything configured properly here's my notes Configure MyRDB and adding users. Yep, check. That is ready to go. The next thing in the next video is connecting MyRDB using dBeaver to build databases. How much easier can it get? All right, I'll see you back here in that video.